way, and I will try to get to all of them. So starting out, what exactly is a BBL and how is it performed? So a BBL is a combination of two procedures. It's a combination of liposculpture and then fat grafting to the buttocks. And it's not a set standard about what is involved or what body parts um, are included with the liposculpture, but most commonly it's lipo360, meaning liposuction of the abdomen, flanks, and back. Um, in combination with then transferring fat to the hips and buttocks to enhance your natural curves. Um, you can also add different areas of liposuction like the arms or inner thighs, uh, but standardly that's the most common areas that are included. There's also other adjuncts you can add in addition to the traditional liposuction, which is things like VASER or body type, which are two of the technologies we have here at Pure Plastic Surgery for um, enhancing those results. They both kind of help with um, tissue contraction to help with skin tightening, and VASER also helps a lot with blood loss associated with this procedure. So how long do the results of <coughs> BBL last? And the, the short answer is forever, because we're transferring that fat and after it takes and um, hooks up to a new blood supply, it's gonna last forever. And the fat that we remove from different areas is also going to be gone forever. Now, does that mean you can't gain or lose weight? That is not true. You have to maintain these results. So yes, the results last forever. You do also have to maintain those results with proper diet and exercise because major fluctuations in weight can, um, even though we're removing those fat cells and moving them to somewhere else, they can still expand and shrink in the butt. And then the fat cells that are left in the stomach or the back can um, expand or shrink with changes in weight as well. So you wanna get to a nice healthy weight where you're happy at, and you'll think you'll be able to maintain for a while before jumping into a procedure like a BBL. So how painful is the recovery? This is a very subjective question. Um, I have some patients that tolerate this uh, unbelievably well, and really don't even take uh, the narcotic pain medication that we give them the first few days of surgery, and they do really well. Others have a little harder time with it, but I think this is a lot to do with your mindset. So if you go into it knowing you're gonna have some discomfort, the pain really is manageable. Um, it's often described to me as like having a really bad workout where you did 10,000 sit-ups, something like that, and that's the type of burning type pain and sensation that you get related to it. Now, it's usually only bad for the first two or three days that it's very tolerable after that. Um, when will I be able to sit and sleep normally? So, when we are transferring this fat, we're taking it from somewhere else, we're disconnecting it from its native blood supply, and it has to reestablish a blood supply in the buttocks and the hips. In order to do that, it needs to reconnect, and we can't have a lot of pressure on that fat, or it's going to die. So you need to avoid sitting or laying down on your butt completely for the first two weeks. After the first two weeks, you can start using a BBL pillow, which is a special pillow that goes underneath your thighs and offloads the pressure um, when you're sitting down for short periods of time. But this is one of those procedures where you really have to commit to the results in doing, following our instructions because your results just won't be as good as they could be if you're not going to follow our instructions like getting massages, wearing your fahas, and staying off of your uh, butt. So, uh, how long does it take for to see final results? So you're gonna see immediate results uh, right after the procedure, but you're gonna have a lot of swelling on the areas that we liposuction. You're gonna have a lot of swelling to the areas that we wrap the fat to. Also, not 100% of the fat that we transfer is going to survive long-term, that's expected. So approximately 70% of that fat is gonna survive long-term. So things may feel a little overdone immediately after surgery, and it tends to sort itself out as your swelling goes down and some of that fat doesn't survive long-term, and then you're gonna see your long-term results at around the three-month mark, and things are gonna be pretty stable at that point. So <laughs> what type of fat can be used for BBL and ideal amounts? So the type of fat that we use is subcutaneous fat. So we can only take fat that is below the skin, above the muscle. We can't take any of your visceral fat or the fat that's around your organs. 
Um, and there's parts of our body that are more ideal for liposuction than others. Uh, the lateral thighs is not a great place to take the fat from, but the abdomen, flanks, back, inner thighs, arms, those are all good places to take fat from. Uh, and the ideal amounts. So the amounts we remove with liposculpture in the state of Florida, um, it's limited to four liters for outpatient surgery, and we abide by those rules. So, you know, we'll let you know if you're a good candidate for this, or if it's something that needs to be broken up over two surgeries, but most patients are served well with that limit, and we can get them great results with that four liters. The amount of fat that we transfer is really patient dependent on what your goals are, and then more importantly, what your anatomy or your own skin will allow us to transfer. Um, some people, if you have a very small butt to begin with, your skin is not going to expand enough to receive a large amount of fat in one shot. That's why some patients opt to go for a round two BBL so we can um, give, the chance, give the skin a chance to expand and then accept more fat in a second procedure. Is it possible to combine BBL with other procedures? Um, so I only like to combine it with liposuction procedures. So liposuction in different areas. I don't like to do it with tummy tucks or breast surgery because of the reason that we stated it up here, uh, having to not be able to sit down or lay down on your butt. I don't want you laying down or sitting down on a breast augmentation or a tummy tuck. So I really strongly believe that these are procedures that should be separated and done at different times. And ideally, if you need a tummy tuck, you do the tummy tuck before you get the BBL because it's much easier to do in that order. Uh, what are risks and complications are involved with the BBL? Like any surgery, there are risks involved. Um, here at Pure Plastic Surgery, we have great protocols in place to keep those risks at an absolute minimum and uh, consistently perform better than the national averages. But those risks include infections, bleeding, possible risk for uh, need for transfusion, hematoma, contour irregularities, and uh, the most feared complication is the risk of fat embolism, which is where fat is injected into a vein. But there's some things we do here at Pure Plastic Surgery where that risk is very low, and those are one, being well-trained and really understanding the anatomy, doing a lot of these procedures. It's something that we commonly do. It's not a once in a while thing. And then three and probably the most important thing is using ultrasound guidance. So we're seeing exactly where we're injecting that fat whenever we're over the danger zone or the area where that could possibly happen. And we have a very good track record of not having any fat embolisms here at Pure Plastic Surgery. Um, So what kind of post-op care is necessary for the best results? And like I said before, this is one of those labor intensive um, procedures for the patients. And I like to tell people about 50% of the result is what I'm able to provide during the three hours that we're doing surgery. And the other 50% comes from your commitment to getting post-op lymphatic massages, wearing your fajas and staying off of your butt. If you're able to do those things exactly as we direct, um, you're going to get a great result. Who's a good candidate for a VBL and who, uh, which I, I can consider before deciding surgery. So good candidates are people that have minimal skin laxity, that have some good overall structure, but just want to enhance and improve that structure, and um, people that don't have any overlying skin, because those patients probably need a tummy tuck before we get uh, BBL. And the things you could, should consider before getting surgery, or who you choose as your surgeon, is the things we kind of discussed related to our safety. You want to go to highly trained surgeons that are using ultrasound guidance, that work in accredited facilities, um, like our facility here at Pure is JCO certified, and we have all the uh, necessary training and backup support if a uh, problem was to ever arise. So I know that's a lot of information for a short video, but do we have any additional questions from the audience? <laughs> all right, looks like we don't have anything right now. Please go to pureplasticsurgery.com to check us out. If you have any questions, hit us up there and we will be sure to get back to you. Have a great day, everyone.